This is going to be the first of our little videos on preparedness and such. Um, in this one, I'd like to talk about one of our primary needs, and, and that's food. Um, you can see that our lights are back on, so that's kind of nice for us. But uh, what I'd like to talk about is food for long-term preparedness, and then also for just, you know, when the lights go out and what can you do. And there are a couple of things to consider. Um, one is how do you heat your food uh, it, if you need heated food. Um, the other is uh, other just options you have just to eat food on the fly and stuff. So what I've got is I've got a couple of different things here. One thing I've got is different types of food. Um, one of the easiest things to do and probably the most common sense things to do is just to store up some canned goods. Uh, that's what uh, you can buy it, when you buy something at the grocery store, like you're buying a can of soup, get an extra one and just stick it aside. Um, also have it in a rotational basis so that you don't accumulate things that are going to be there and, and spoil or go out of date or such. Out of date's a relative thing. You can go a little bit beyond there, but, uh, but you can use some things. What we've got here is we've just got some soup. This is Progresso French, you know, this is creamy basil onion, you know, or tomato soup. One thing I do like is the tops. You can just pull a top. A lot of people have electric can openers. They don't work when the power's out. So get something with a little pop top and that way you can just pull it off and then you can put it in the container to heat or whatever. Um, something we do, th we actually use cup of soup sometimes. These are pretty easy to do. You just pour it in a cup, add some water, some hot water and, and do like that. So you've got some soup to, to drink or eat or whatever. Um, soups are good because in the winter time it provides some warmth, but it also provides some uh, salts, it provides some uh, good, you know, you just feel good after a, after a nice bowl of soup. A bowl of soup and a hot cup of tea or hot chocolate is really, really good. And the nice thing is you don't have to do anything but eat one pot. For the soup, if it's a cup of soup, you just heat the hot water and then go from there. If it's the other soup, you'll probably use two pots or so. Um, one thing you can do as far as other types of meals, if you want something more complete, um, if you're on the fly and you just want to do something, these are MREs. Um, you can buy these uh, from any online sort of thing. Just punch up MREs and, and it'll come up for some companies. This is one type and uh, this is another type. And they've got all sorts of things in them. The only thing about MREs is they have about a five-year lifespan. So check the expiration dates and such on these. We've used them after the dates, but that's up to you. You know, use your own judgment there. Uh, we had some the other day, and it was the, the Skittles in them were all crystallized, so we threw away the Skittles, but we ate the other part that looked good and smelled good. But look and smell is not always reliable, so use your own judgment there. Um, but as far as these goes, these are fairly expensive. Uh, your canned goods and stuff are probably your cheapest way to get anything as far as preparedness for food. But MREs are an option. The good thing about them is they have a heater inside. They heat themselves. The other thing is that you can put them in a backpack and if you needed to go somewhere else you could do that. If, you're, um, you know, if your house is semi-destroyed and you can't heat it, things otherwise, you've got these to rely on. And as far as storing these, oftentimes we'll store them in one of these ammo cans. And my figuring on that is if it's in an ammo can, the ammo can itself is probably not going to be destroyed. It may be relocated somewhere else, but we could find that and my food's still going to be intact. So I'll store it in a big ammo can and that sort of thing. So hopefully it'll be safe. Um, for long-term food storage, there are a lot of people who are getting into some of these other products, the freeze-dried products and the 25-year um, uh, food storage. And um, two companies that are out there that are fairly common, one's Patriot Pantry, um, or Patriot Supply, and the other one is Wise Foods. There's a bunch of other ones on the market. Um, you can choose whatever you want if you want to do that. Uh, it, it's a con that's a considerable investment if you want to do that. Um, you can store up to a month or two months or even a year's worth of food that way. But it's, it's something you don't want to probably do overnight because it is so much money. These are really expensive as far as it goes. The good thing is you get four servings out of this, and servings are relative, if you remember. Um, it may be that two people can eat four servings at one meal. So try it out. You can order trial packs and stuff like that and see if it's something you like. If it's something you don't care anything about, don't get it. Um, the other thing about these is it does take a little bit of time to heat them up. Some of these are 20 minutes boiling, which is a long time on a stove or whatever like that if you're limited in your, in your heating supply. An option to these is something like the Mountain House freeze-dried foods. Mountain House freeze-dried foods are our backpack foods, and all we do is boil water, pour it in the pouch. It 
reconstitutes the water in the pouch itself. And then as soon as five minutes is over with, you go ahead and just eat it. You can eat it out of the pouch or you can partition it out to your individuals and you can go from there. But Mountain House, those are just instant meals that are pretty easy to do and you get a good hot meal out of it too. But again, they're pretty expensive. All of these pretty much are compared to just canned foods. Um, one option you can have if you want to do something just on a little basis or whatever, you can get like a, this is a four-week supply that's pre-made or whatever like that. And I think these came from uh, Ready Hour is the company that did it. And uh, it's another company, but it's similar to the Wise or the Patriot Supply sort of things. And But it's all kind of prepackaged, and you've got breakfast and suppers and stuff that are available for stuff there. So it's a good way of doing things. Um, one question, though, is if I have these foods and I have soups and whatever like that, how do I actually heat them up? Um, we've got a variety of heat sources, everything from the fireplace outside that we can heat cast iron cookware or even aluminum or, or stainless steel usually is what we do on that. But um, we have the outside fire, but we live out in the country and we can kind of do that. Um, one thing that we do is we have some backpack stoves or some camp stoves. Uh, if you have a Coleman stove with it burns white gas or something, that's great. Um, fuel doesn't last forever, but it's one of those things that it's there when you need it and you could use that. One thing that will last a pretty good while are some of these propane stoves, and this is uh, isobutane is actually the substance that's in here. And the good thing is it'll operate in low temperatures, but this is really, really easy to operate. Um, this one goes on a, a, a MSR stove or something like that. This is a MSR stove set up, but this is a particular type. This is actually the stove is this right here, um, and there it is. And this is a backpack stove that I have. It's real lightweight and compact, but it screws on here. And one thing you might want to notice, it'll screw on here, but this one doesn't have screw things on it. So watch out when you buy canisters to make sure that they fit your stove. This stove is pretty pricey because it's so lightweight. A cheaper version is this one that's Coleman. This is a Walmart variety, and that's just fine. Nothing wrong with that. You can get the canisters from Walmart, too. This one screws on just like the MSR one does, but you can see how... It's compact also, it'll screw off. And I can put all of this, I actually keep my stove and one canister and a cigarette lighter all in an old, this is an old cookie tin that I think those little pirouettes or something came in. But uh, I just put it in an old cookie tin. It'll, I can disassemble this, slide it down in there, put this in there, plus a cigarette lighter or something so that I can light my stove and then I have my, the whole thing is compact. But that's an easy way of doing it. Um, we do have some different types of pots that we use. This is the pot that I usually boil water on. And this is a lightweight backpack pot. The other day I was actually using a kitchen pot to do things with because it, you know, works fine. The problem with those is they have long handles on them and they might not be as stable. So be careful with that because you can spill your hot water, which is you've obtained and it's a valuable resource. So, you know, you don't want to spill what you've just spent a lot of fuel on. As far as, you know, storing fuel and such, I've got you know, a dozen or so of these sort of canisters, and they won't last forever. So it's one of those things, if you're looking for long-term storage or something, it's probably not going to be, this is going to last you a little while, and then you're going to have to go to the fire outside, is the way it goes. But this will get you through a, a pretty good while. I can use one of these smaller canisters, and it'll last me at least close to a week of heating up food and stuff like that. Now, if I use the Wise Foods, it's not going to last that long, because I'm going to have to heat food a lot longer. But, um, these are some ideas. I'm sure y'all have other ideas and such. Our best bet, we actually have a garden that we use and we garden from the outside. So we'll have fresh vegetables coming in. And our garden is not big. I'll have some pictures of this on this uh, video also. But it's not too big, but it provides, we had spinach all winter long and then we just have finished up with the spinach season and had gone through the asparagus season and such like that. And I'm in the process now of, uh, I planted potatoes and I'll be planting beans in just a little bit. And it's in a small space, so it doesn't take a big investment. It doesn't take a lot of effort. I have raised beds, it's real easy to maintain. And it, you know, and it doesn't take a lot of space. Uh, one of my friends sent me some pictures the other day. She's container gardening and she already has squash that are coming up, which we don't have because we're in the ground. Um, so she's ahead of the curve, you know, on that. So there are all sorts of options, even if you have a patio or something. You can grow some of your own vegetables, and that way you can have a little bit of incoming fresh for, sort of fruits. Uh, or fruits. Um, but uh, do the best you can. Do it a little bit at a time. Right now is a critical time for us in South Carolina because we're looking at, okay, we just had power outages and such like that. So now is not the best time to do it. 
but now is the best time to start for whatever next disaster you may have. Because disasters happen, and it's not, you know, anything that's, you, you know, that's not going to happen. Sometime in your life, you're going to experience something. Our first big one was Hurricane Hugo, and it really opened up our eyes for a lot of things. And that was really when we started thinking in terms of what does it take to live for a good while um, without the conveniences that you're used to. So this one's about food. Our next one will probably be about some of the other things like providing power if you need that. Um, uh, a lot of people do uh, as far as keeping refrigerators and stuff going. So we'll do that in our next one and see you know, how that goes. But I hope you enjoy this. Y'all take care and uh, be safe out there.